What is the most effective psychological trick you use? Predictability means safe. I'm a school teacher with a high number of students with trauma. Major issues while getting my routines established. But they are now super warm to me because I'm reliably predictable. I have two outfits that I alternate. I'm on wed free and a two thirds. Same greeting at the start of class. Same start to every class etc. Have very transparent discipline too. They know exactly what gets a detention and what doesn't. If they can predict what will happen. They feel safe because they're in control of choosing their outcome for the day. Doing something you're avoiding by just doing the smallest possible step. Like washing one plate. It cracks the procrastination paralysis and you usually end up doing the whole thing anyway. This works for exercise. 2. Commit to 5 minutes and you'll usually stay in motion. Fake it till you make it can really trick yourself into doing something you didn't want to do. For example, I really don't feel like starting on my report. Let me just pretend that I'm interested in doing it. Look over the data and act like I was getting any information out of them. And then next thing I know I was balls deep into my report. My wife utilizes this technique in bed. We're still waiting on the make it part. Not sure if it's a trick but I can ask my so to do something a million times. And the answer will always be later. But if I say, okay, don't worry about it I'll go do it. He will do it immediately. I've started doing the opposite with my husband. He's kind of a mess and is always spilling stuff on the floors counters tables everywhere all the time. And then he just leaves it there, unfortunately. And this is my fault more than his. He had grown very accustomed to me cleaning it up right away because I can't stand it. Recently I started something else. Me. Husband man. You spilled avocado on the floor. Hectometers. Whoops. Me. Are you cleaning it? Hectometers. Later. Me. Okay then. And then I go about my business. It only takes like 60 seconds before he's up grabbing paper towels and cleaning up after himself. It is absolutely incredible and I should have done this a long time ago. Remember people's names. Greet them by it when you see them. Even if that's the only time this week you might. People really like it when someone remembers them. It's easy credit. I do this with customer service reps. I write down their name so it's in front of me when I need it. I use their name at the pivotal point in the call. Tony. That's great. Thank you. One last thing. Would it be possible to lower the monthly rate as well? I think it's called the hairy arms trick. When I'm about to hand in the first version of a piece of work, I will leave a small but noticeable error that's easy to fix. It's always the error that my boss notices and suggests changing. Which means that he she feels involved in the process but also doesn't note pick for something arbitrary to criticize. I wish I knew about this trick when I had to write short medical segments for the local news. If I showed my editor something that I felt was perfect he would make me move sentences around for an hour and end up almost exactly where we started. I'm not nervous. I'm excited nerve killer every time. To add to this, the body gets exactly the same signals from the brain with stress and excitement. High heart rate and blood pressure. Bit of adrenaline. Put into a state of high alert. The difference is whether your brain goes this will be good for me or bad for me. I don't know if it's effective yet but I'll try to make myself believe that my due dates for college assignments are one day before so I can pressure me and finish them on time. That's kind of like how I've got all the clocks set to about 15 minutes ahead so I get to work on time. I actually didn't know how many minutes forward I set it. Did it without looking. After a while, I noticed I had started subconsciously adjusting for it and that it stopped working. I wouldn't call it a trick. But empathizing with someone goes a long way. If you can explain their perspective back to them in a way that actually proves you understand it, you have a much better chance of getting them to listen to your perspective. My line of work mostly deals with frustrated customers, and I pride myself on being able to empathize and relate to them. It's given me a huge edge over my less empathic colleagues, and also means I deal with a lot less grief. I think a lot of the time people just want to be heard and understood it builds their trust in you makes everything else easy. When I was younger and I wanted to get pizza I was whispering pizza and showing my father a meme with pizza in it. Sometime later my dad has this genius idea to order pizza lol. Just think, those inception folks tried so hard, when all along the secret was memes. Ben Franklin effect if someone doesn't like you. Convince them to do you a favor or lend you something. 
It'll trick their subconscious into convincing them they like you. Very handy ad work. I read this one on Quora once and always wondered if it actually works. Small favors are great for it. Pass that over here could you grab the door where is X in our company files? Something that you're showing appreciation for but to them costs less than 2 mins or so. Talks after so people either de-escalate or pay more attention. This, there is a 16 year age gap between myself and my youngest sister. When she got to the tantrum age, I would sit near her and start talking quietly. If she wanted to hear me, she had to stop throwing a tantrum. Save my teenage sanity. After I woke up I opened the fridge to eat my ice cream but it has been eaten. I immediately knew it was my brother. If I asked him did you eat my ice cream, I'm sure he gonna deny all but what I did is. I told him I bought you an ice cream. Go eat it. Then he immediately said I already eat it. And you know what happened to him after. Silence. It's so powerful. If I want to find out more about what someone is really thinking or feeling instead of nodding along or using some verbal filler. I just don't say or do anything. It's amazing how people respond. So often as people we interrupt each other before things reach a deeper level. Plus, some people find silence uncomfortable and need to fill it. I found out so much this way. More effective if you nod slightly or shift your weight forward a touch and freeze right as you start the silence. You're starting a body language affirmation and then stop halfway through it when they stop talking. Huge psychological pressure on top of the silence that they need to continue. Had a journalist show me and use it on me. So hard to not overshare. I get what I call verbal vomit when someone asks me a question and doesn't say anything in response after I answer. I can hear the words coming out and mentally I'm like stop. Just stop talking. Please for the love of god bite your lip and shut up and they just look at me deadpan and I keep blathering. Uck. I hate it. One of the best ways to defuse a conflict while also getting what you want from a person is to compliment them. Telling them that they are the qualities you want them to start being in that moment. And then they will usually begin to start acting like it all. The idea of a compliment throws them off and makes them want to listen more. And then the things you said which they are not will bother their ego and they will usually try to start acting like the way you complimented them for being because to not do so would prove you wrong and they would feel foolish. You can literally trick their own ego against them. This is also a great way to make enemies like you more. I've made enemies into friends using this trick. This is a slippery slope. I had a co-worker who I'm in conflict with try to patronize me by offering a generic compliment amidst trying to take work from me and it smelled of ego stroking. This method doesn't work on people who are actively trying to minimize their ego, but I see how it could work on others. If you're going to do it with manipulation in mind, beware you're furthering moral conflict. If you're doing it to genuinely change your own perspective on the person with no expectation of change in outcome or trying to change them, it can actually be effective at bringing peace into the situation. At work, when I know something is not working due to a mistake that someone else has made, I ask them if I've done something wrong or if I understand the process correctly. I find more people are willing to own up to something and fix it quickly if they are not made to feel defensive with direct accusations. You can remind yourself to do any task by leaving a random object in the middle of the floor on your way out of the room. When you come back in you'll see the object and remember why you left it there. Works every time. I tried this. I just ended up going a right I need to do that. While stepping over the object and procrastinating. I literally gave my classmates treats so that they would stop being bullies. It actually worked. Edit. Gave them a treat every time they did something nice. I even did a survey for a class exercise to see what everyone's favorite lolly was. Saying thanks rather than please. As a teacher I use this on small things like instructions when I don't want to argue with students. It's amazing how much more effective the sentence get out your book thanks is compared to get out your book please. It implies that there is no conversation or option for the students. That and it is great to see so many people with their book out ready to start learning. I have said this when only 10% have their book out and everyone rushes to get their book out. Everyone wants brazen to be part of the group. If you tell someone you need their help, they are more likely to do what it is you want or need, rather than you telling them to just do it. Hey little Jim, when you get done dinner, I need your help in the kitchen. Little Jim, okay dad, shows up. Tell him you're loading the dishwasher. 
put a couple of plates in and he'll help and then thank him after. Or, little Jim, after dinner you need to do the dishes. Little Jim, F off you old C. Big difference. Is little Jim perhaps the puller? Whenever I feel myself getting overwhelmed I picture myself taking problems and putting them in a box. Then later that night I come back to the box and deal with the problems then. Just throw the box out each night. Read this on a thread a few months back and it's actually surprisingly effective. If you're in the middle of a conversation, even better if it's a serious one, and you hand the other person something, they usually take it without question or hesitation. Another good one with this is if, say a person is known to stop by at your desk at work and talk a lot usually just some venting or something unproductive, I'll stand up and start walking and I'll keep talking with them until I've planted them back in their own chair and then conclude the conversation so I can go do what I actually need to be doing. They usually look surprised that they're back where they're supposed to be, but it is very effective.